these are the Villanova Wildcats. They're ready for playoff football at South Dakota State. And here come the Jackrabbits. Coming up next, round two of the FCS playoffs from Brookings, South Dakota. It's the NCAA FCS second round presented by Northwestern Mutual. These two teams have never met before, but today the stakes couldn't be higher. Villanova at 9-3, South Dakota State at 8-3. The winner of this game, as indicated by the brackets, will move on to play North Dakota State or San Diego. That game starts in about a half hour from now. Greetings, good afternoon, Jim Barber, the former Marshall quarterback and star, John Gregory. <laughs> a lot of great storylines in today's game. Let's begin with the coaches. Andy Talley's on the David Ortiz farewell tour last year <laughs> as the head coach of Villanova, and Stiggs, John Stegelmeyer, entering his second decade at South Dakota State. That's right, 57 years between these two guys as head coaches, 394 wins. And over those years, South Dakota State looking for their first win in the month of November. For Andy Talley, he's looking to win one more ball game so he can have a chance to play one more day next week. Yeah, absolutely. And let's talk quarterbacks today, both as sophomores, Zach Bednarczyk and Taryn Christian, and both are very mobile as well. Yeah, they certainly are. Bednarczyk has 18 touchdown passes on the year, just a sophomore, but 23 career starts for this young guy. On the other side, Taryn Christian, just a sophomore as well, 29 touchdown passes on the year. He's fourth in the FCS in touchdown passes. Both guys are exciting quarterbacks. Should be a great matchup today. Yeah, I think so too, John. This is your type of weather today. It's cold, it's windy, it might snow. Coming up next, playoff football from ESPN3. Villanova, South Dakota State, Dana J. Dykow Stadium in Brookings, South Dakota. $65 million stadium. Let's see how Villanova has planned for success. Brought to you by Northwestern Mutual, and the focus is on this man, year 37 as a head coach, year number 32 at Villanova, the winningest active coach in either FCS or FBS, John. Yeah, he's got tremendous respect around the country. You can see that 37 years as a head coach, and boy, he's going out at the right time at Villanova. When we toured in on I-29 North today toward Brookings, lots of clouds rolling in. No major indicator for snow, but she would have fooled us. <laughs> it really looks as if we're going to have some snow before the day is out. The winds are strong, gusting up to 18 miles per hour. And both kickers today try kicking with the wind to see how that might affect their game. The man they call Stiggs, the MVC coach of the year. Of course, they were co-MVC champions for the Missouri Valley, John Stiglmeyer. And Jim, I said month of November, month of December, this team's looking for their first win in the month of December for South Dakota State. You know what? I know what you meant. <laughs> <laughs> it's December and it's cold and we're ready to play. The 11, Marquise Lewis, and number one, Jacob Brown getting a chance to play today as Mikey Daniel is out for South Dakota State with a shoulder problem. So Villanova will kick first. And that means South Dakota State with its high flying offense. 11th in the country at 37 and a half points a game will get a chance to draw first blood. Great festive audience here as Steve Weiler 95 kicks off. We're underway. It is returnable from inside the five. And field position will start just past the 21 yard line. Tackle made by Austin Colitro. On the return by number one, Jacob Brown. The Jacks or Jackrabbits, they're the favorite by about two touchdowns today. They get a chance to go on offense first. John, I watched them as you did, hours of tape this week. In particular, the game against North Dakota State of Man, were they impressive, particularly 
in that late fourth quarter drive to win it. Yeah, and it's no question about it. It's left led by this sophomore quarterback. You can see 3,300 career or passing yards this year, 385 rushing yards, so he can do it both ways. Because Villanova was offsides on the kick, we're going to go five yards further back, and we'll try it again. So already our first penalty right out of the box. You and I have had games earlier this year watching teams like Ball State in the Mid-American Conference where penalties were quite rare. To see one right at the start is also unique. Yeah, and part of the reason why both of these teams have had such great success, we mentioned the coaches, but it's the discipline both of these teams have and what these coaches teach these players. So kind of curious to see a penalty right off the start. I don't expect we'll see a whole lot of that today. That means Steve Weiler will start the kick from the 30-yard line. A great festive atmosphere today, and we are officially underway. No offsides this time. Jacob Brown will return inside the 10. Cuts it at midfield across the 25, and here we go with the South Dakota State offense. Tackle on that play made by number 56, Jeff Steve. Let's talk impact players. Jake Winicky and Dallas Goddard are two good wide receivers, Don and tight ends you can find a lot of activity out there today yeah both of those guys over a thousand yards this year in receiving yardage and uh, what a great defense they're going to go against this is an offense against a great defense too and rob roll of safety leads the leads the country in interceptions for this team and pano passigno this guy is going to come off the edge six foot seven defensive end you'll see plenty of him today he has 11 sacks and 21 tackles for losses and a scrimmage, 26, play action to start for Christian. Ball caught, 44-yard line, first down on a catch of 18, and a good start for Christian. He's got plenty of guys to throw the football to today. Reception on the play by Connor Landberg. And for Landberg, 18th catch of the year, and his 209th reception in a very fine career here at SDSU. Official spot, 43-yard line, and time being called for the moment. Yes, we'll trade footballs. This is a big sky officiating crew led by referee Scott Root. Dave Pizinski will be our replay official. Communicator Zach Schuster will introduce the rest of the guys to you momentarily. Momentarily. A lot of misdirection on this team and on that particular carry. Brady Mangarelli carries the football. Mangarelli is going to get an opportunity uh, probably a few more today in the fact that Mikey Daniels out with shoulder issues. Jeff Steve makes the tackle. It is a pickup on that play of four to be second and six. Yeah, you're right. We will see a lot of Mangarelli today. Not only that, Isaac Wallace, we found out just before the football game, the number two rusher on this football team did not pass concussion protocol, so we will not see him today as well. So the number one offense in a lot of people's minds, handicap from the beginning, not Christian to carry. And Villanova stayed right at home, which was the game plan of the Wildcats to make sure that Christian didn't get any penetration. He is brought down by Ed Shockley, the outside linebacker, number 33. If Villanova is going to have success today, they're going to have to really secure the edge. They've got great linebackers that can run to the football. They have two very good defensive ends that can set that edge. A guy like Shockley and Steve and Calitro, their linebackers will be very active. And you know, Shockley said about his head coach on the way out, he said, we're physical, we're hungry, and we're going to do this for coach. Brings up a third down and six. No gain on the play. Christian shoots one out of the backfield. Going to be short of the first down by plenty. So on the toss to Mangarelli. Once again, Villadova doing a nice job of staying at home. And Jeff Steven, Rashawn Stewart have been very active so far. So a lot of credit to this Wildcat defense, which is one of the best in FCS, Jim. Yeah, you can see the offensive line that time cutting the defensive ends, trying to give a quarterback space to throw the ball to the outside. But really, this is going to be a feeling out process for this South Dakota State offense against this very good Villanova defense. 24, Torres Phillips. Going back to the football at the six. Makes one man miss. Goes straight ahead. Returns the punt for a total of six yards. And Villanova gets its first chance on offense as Kyle Harris goes up to beat him on special teams. A chance to introduce Zach Bednarczyk to you. It's a left-handed thrower has thrown for 
3,334 career yards, second best this season in the CAA. We mentioned it just a sophomore. He was forced into action last year, and it really was not his football team. And I mean that from a standpoint of being just a freshman. They had a guy, John Robertson, who was one of the top quarterbacks in the country that was hurt. So he's really earned the respect of this team this year. And that's important for a quarterback, particularly when he gets to the playoffs. We'll do some zone reads today. This time it's just a straight handoff and a pickup of a couple yards on the play. The principal running backs are Matt Goodzak, Javon, uh, Javon White, and Aaron Forbes. And let's talk about impact players for Villanova. Goodzak and Ryan Bell is a terrific tight end on the season with 29 catches and seven scores. On the defensive side, what do you like about Rose Boom? And Bobbitt, John. Uh, Roseboom, just a true freshman, but over 100 tackles on the year. Bobbitt, second on the team in tackles with 95. Again, two linebackers that are very active, but Roseboom, how about him as a freshman? Over 100 tackles. Very active out there on second down. Play action that Narcic will tuck and run. One of the things he does so very well, out of bounds at the 22. It's a pickup of seven yards on the play, and good enough for Villanova first down. Bed Narzik is a type of guy that's a really a pocket passer. He wants to throw the football first, but he has the ability to pull it down and do that. We mentioned 500 yards rushing on the year at 50 last week against St. Francis on eight rushes, but very active with his legs. He gives you the ability to extend plays and do what he needs to do for this Villanova offense. Yes, check that. Out of bounds in the 28, carry of 13. First down for the Wildcats. No pitch and catch, but the problem is... The catch on the flat was not made by Jarrett McClinton, who typically lines up in the slot for Andy Talley and the Wildcats. You know what? If this team is going to have success today offensively, Villanova, they're going to have to make those plays. South Dakota State defense, very good. Whole teams all year. This is a great matchup of two conferences when you look at these two. I think we, we probably have the best maybe matchup in the country as far as teams that are closely matched. And that drop reminded me of the Bears game last week against Jacksonville with a wide open receiver in the end zone with a chance for Chicago to win and a drop just like that for moments ago. We get the third down after the tackle by Jared Bloom. That's good Zach carries and now Villanova. On third down for the season, effective at 41%. That's top 30 in the country as Andy Talley, the CEO in his final season of Villanova, looks on. Ben Narzik with time looking over the middle. Ball caught. And the reception inside the 45-yard line. Huge third down play. Jesse Bobbitt makes the tackle, but not before Ryan Bell makes his second catch of the game good for 25 yards. Bednarzik has the ability. Result of the play, first down. Bednarzik, watch him step up in the pocket here. He said he's a pocket passer, left handers you can clearly see there, but who does he find? His big guy, Ryan Bell. Two tight ends in this game. I, Jim, I think they're two of the best in the FCS, and we're going to get a lot of action with the tight ends and they really make an offense go it's the play action fakes that hold the linebackers that allow bell to get down the middle you know bell's a walk-up it's hard to believe isn't it? <laughs> little option right now for ben who will keep the football and carries down to the 32 yard line and he is close to another first down for the wildcats so they hold serve on defense then a pickup by ben of close to 10 and then the tackle by zach brown but here comes villanova so Bednarzik, they run a traditional offense with the one back. They hand it to their guys and the ability to play action fake, but they're going to throw some option at you too. So you have to study a lot of film if you're going to try to stop this Villanova offense. Two running quarterbacks today, and right now it's Bednarzik who's on the move. Zone Reed, handoff to Goodzak, who can run between the tackles and also bounce outside plenty enough for the first down so with nine and change remaining in the first quarter Villanova on the move after South Dakota State's drive stalled around midfield this Christian Roseboom the redshirt freshman you're talking about John and Cliff Brown was the guy that recruited him the defensive coordinator so we tried to give credit to uh, to Stig about that when he said no that's uh, that's that's coach Brown he was after him from day one First and 10 now, football at the 30. Gets that to the 25, or close to the 25. Pick up a roughly four before he is brought down. 
Now watch the big offensive lineman, Nico D'Angelo, out in front here. Patience from a running back as he just kind of hides behind his big 280-pound left guard as he pulls around to the right side. Both of these offensive lines, very good, very experienced, and we expect both sides to play well today, and they're going to have to against these good defenses. Second down. Villanova approaching the red zone in a scoreless football game. Ball is fumbled, but Narzik fumbles again. Ball was still loose, so... Two problems with Ben Narzik, unfortunately. 85 Ryan Bell fell on it. A loss on the play, but it could have been much worse for Villanova. These are two very good football teams when you talk about turnovers on the year. Both teams plus on the year, and you can see the defensive player gets his arm or hand right on the arm of Ben Narzik, and that ball scoots out. They were fortunate to be able to get back on top of it. Christian Banasek once again active on that South Dakota State defense. Third and ten, and a penalty coming up against Villanova. False start. Offense, number 73. Five-yard penalty. That's on Green Ethan Greenidge, who has been dealing with a high ankle sprain. That pushes Villanova five more yards back. This is play ten of the drive coming up. But instead of third and short moments ago, it is now third and 15. But Narsik against a four-man rush. Shoots one underneath. It's not going to be enough for the first down, but off the reception by Phillips, they picked up a lot of valuable yardage. And will leave them in a fourth and short decision, and that's a good play call by Villanova. It is. They let everybody clear out and had a patience of Bednarzik there to wait for his receiver to come underneath, and Torres Phillips gets him down there close to a situation where they decide they're going to go for it here early in this football game. Number 28, Alex Padovani, has just come in for Villanova. He runs some good routes. He's a good possession receiver, so keep your eye on him. And fourth down, Villanova's been stymied a lot this year. Six for 21. Big play early in the game. Not going to be enough. South Dakota State makes a stand. And the Jackrabbits get the football. Banasek up there once again, number 69. Penetration will kill an offense all the time. Jesse Bobbitt, the weak side linebacker, gets great penetration, able to disrupt that. No score on the first possessions for both teams. Under seven, first quarter, no score. Here comes some of the snow. By the way, congratulations to Villanova and the men's team, which polished off St. Joe today, 88-57. Jay Wright's team will be the number one team in the country in the next poll because UCLA knocked off number one Kentucky. And Jay Wright's a big football fan, John, so he'll get a chance to watch this game as well today. And he's got to be impressed, as are the Wildcats, with the way they've been able to defend so far. Well, first possession, they were able to get off the field, but this is a very potent offense, as we said before. South Dakota State has been able to score on everybody all year long. The ability to get it done through the air on the ground. So, Mangarelli, you're going to see, we're going to feed them the ball all day long. And, Nick, Jim, we're getting our first flurries out there that you predicted. I love it. Got to wonder, too, about the loss of Mikey Daniel and Isaac Wallace. You mentioned that in the backfield is going to affect this team. On a throw out to the flat, nothing available. Ball caught by 86, Dallas Goddard, who is one of three players on this team up for the Peyton Award. And Trey Johnson, in the corner, was able to make the stop in space. Yeah, he was the field corner. He had a guy, a receiver out there blocking. He fought right through that to be able to disrupt that play and force down out of a third and four situation for South Dakota State. Goddard now the single season receptions record with 79 catches. And counting. Third and three, under six for the first quarter. Christian, three step drop. Finds a receiver in the sidelines, good enough first down. Good improvise there to Jake Winnicky and the catch. Malik Reeves defending the corner. Well, he said Bed Narzik has the ability to extend some play as well. 
Karen Christian, he's as good as anybody at this. He gets recognizes Brian Osei coming off the edge, just makes a step to the outside and makes an easy throw to Winicky, his wide receiver that he'll find all day long. Easy throw for him and easy way to move the chains. Winicky with some NFL possibilities along with Dallas Goddard and a couple other players out here that will continue to identify as the game goes on. Play action for Christian, first down, down the middle of the field. What a catch at the 40-yard line. Oh, my, Goddard. Well, that's one of the reasons that people think he's going to be playing on Sundays, Mondays, and Thursday nights, John. I told you we have two great tight ends. Here's an example why. What an athlete. And here's a guy listed at six foot four, 250 pounds. He goes up with one hand and just snags it out of the air. Now over the middle, another big play. This time it's Winneke, still with a football, down to the 16. And here come the Jackrabbits. And the Jackrabbits have picked up the speed and the tempo a little bit. Once they get Villanova on their heels, they're going to go after him fast. And you can see the completion down the field again. Once they get things rolling, they really like to go a little bit quicker. So a gain of 26, then a gain of 24. As Mangarelli carries there off left tackle. Two plays, 50 yards. And that's Brian White from his defensive tackle position. T.J. White's his brother, a member of this team. We've seen a lot more action this season than he did last year. He played 10 games and made just 13 stops. It'll be second down. Nine yards to go. South Dakota State, the first team into the red zone in our FCS playoff game. Christian from the shotgun. A run to the right and now cut it up the middle. Mangarelli straight ahead. He's got the first down. Well, what do they say about Grady Mangarelli? He's faster than he looks on tape. What do you think, John? And he's pretty powerful, too. At the end of that run, you could see him lowering his head there to get a couple extra yards, but he got great blocking up front by his right tackle that time. It was Tanyo Passanio, the big defensive end. He drove him off the line of scrimmage that time and allowed him to pick up a few extra yards. This is where the Wildcat defense is one of the best in the country in the red zone, fourth. And they've actually denied a team 12 times without a point. They need to come up big here as Christian carries. And it's met at the line of scrimmage and then maybe gets a yard to bring us to second and goal as this fast-moving first quarter is down to three minutes. Brian Osei makes the tackle for the Wildcats. Be interesting to see there bringing in another defensive back here. That's the thing about this South Dakota State offense. They can put pressure on you because of their ability to run the football and having that quarterback down there really past the defensive secondary on how they're going to cover. Yeah, and this is where they're very effective in the red zone at 85%. Little fade route. Got a man. Touchdown! <laughs> Dallas Goddard is 11th touchdown reception of the year and the Jacks strike first. What a great matchup on the outside. You move your tight end. Well, let's call him Slash because they put him all over the football field. They line him outside and get a matchup. Six foot four against six foot Malik Reeves on the outside for Villanova. And that's really a mismatch. You've got that. You just throw it up in the air, let your big receiver go up and get it. Let's not even call him a tight end. Let's just call him an athlete. Yeah, that's well said. He can play a lot of spots. Theodore Trenhale to snap, Terrence Christian to hold, and Chase Vinatieri. I bet that name sounds familiar. Is Uncle Adam still going strong with the Colts? Makes it 7 0. Terrence Christian on this drive was 7 for 7. Dallas Goddard on the receiving end. <laughs> of a short touchdown pass now school reception record 81 1176 <laughs> now this kid can play anywhere man he's uh he's from south dakota this weather doesn't bother him any Darren christian uh, let me correct something seven for seven in the game now but six for six on that drive That good sack number 20 is the deep man for the Wildcats who got stung on this drive moments ago. Catches at the 11. Running to the near side of the field. Makes one man miss. Makes another miss. It's a good kickoff return near the 30-yard line. 
Still looking for Tano Passigno, that great defensive end for Villanova. Haven't been able to spot him in the game to this point. As the snow continues to fall in this bitter December era, we should note that Villanova's headsets are not working, so that means the Wildcats offensive coordinator is going to have to move down to the position of the field. That's Sam Venuto. And the reason South Dakota State does not have to put its headsets down is that Villanova brought its own. Wildcats on offense on first down. Bednarczyk may have gotten back to the original line of scrimmage. Christian Rosebloom. Rosebloom doesn't play like a freshman, but boy, but a guy who has 107 tackles and counting is pretty impressive. Remember Friday Night Lights? I mean, is, shouldn't he? I do. You know, I think he is made for that movie, you know, or that series. He just looks the part. Good looking freshman. Second and 10. Late first quarter, 7 0 Jacks. Then Nights at play action to the flat. Big time game. Good sack. Still with a football. And out of bounds to the 40-yard line. You think of him as a running back, but for the year, he now has 19 catches, over 200 yards, and a couple scores. That was good for 31. And did you see the play action? That's what was able to hold Roseboom up enough where Goodzak could sneak right behind him, and that's an easy throw for Bednarzik. You can see he's got great touch on his long balls. He can just loft it and let it fall into his receiver's hands. He throws it. Very catchable football. That's a good way to neutralize those linebackers with Roseboom right at the middle of it. As you mentioned, John's just slow him down a little bit. And now the football's into South Dakota State territory at the 40. Fresh set of downs, but Narzik in trouble. And sacked and a loss of nine. We just ate him up. Penetration from the inside. Watch, he had nowhere to go. He likes to step up in the pocket. But because you got a great push up front, nowhere to go with the football. Bednarzik doesn't turn it over very often. He just tucks it and takes the sack. Blake Whitesell and Ryan Arith, 99 and 90, were there to greet him. There's Arith, a freshman from Nebraska. A year ago, Bednarzik may throw that ball into South Dakota State's hands and kind of a gunslinger his first year. And that's what his coaches really said he's gotten better at this year. Ten interceptions on the year, but. And a bit much better job of time taking out. care of the ball. Villanova, the first first time out. With the play clock winding down, Villanova has to burn a timeout with 65 seconds remaining in the first quarter. It's a good start for Villanova in the playoffs last week against St. Francis in that game. The Wildcats got off to a huge start in the first quarter, leading 17-7. And eventually Villanova expanded that lead to 31-7, playing on its home turf. We see Andy Talley bringing out one of the little kids over there. They got that thing started early as Aaron Forbes scored, and then they went to the air to Jarrett McClinton on the pass from Ben Narzik, and they were off and running. And a little play action for Ben Narzik, the left-handed thrower, finding an easy toss to Ryan Bell. Again, this is Andy Talley's final season. He says after this, they're going to kick him to emeritus status, and he'll have his uh, he'll have his own room there. Working on the headsets right now, trying to get them operating, but again, they have moved Venuto from upstairs to downstairs for the time being. But Narzik flushed out. Shooting one down the field, nobody there. And it just wasted a pass there as Kalen Sulik, or Salik was in pers pursuit of him. He's had several two sack games this year. So now Villanova in a third and very long, John. And what do you throw here? Do you try to make up some of the distance or you shoot for the first down? Well, I think you got to find somebody. Try to get them maybe down the middle, but it looks like this South Dakota State defense is going to play three deep, five under here. I don't think they'll probably rush three, and that's what it looks like right now. So tough sledding right now for Villanova being third down and backed up as far as they are. Sledding the appropriate word as clouds and snow continue to move in. They'll go underneath. And that'll bring him to fourth down. The Villanova will have to give up the football. Now, because you drop three very deep and you've got eight underneath there, just with only three men rushing that time, nowhere to go with the football down the field. You just pick up what you can, punt it away, and try to play a field position game. 
94, John Hinchin. He was born in Melbourne, Australia. His dad played 13 years of Australian rules football. That's football, John, without a helmet. <laughs> That's a tough cat, man. <laughs> oh, he's only punting. This one will not be fielded and will head into the end zone. Four seconds to go. First half. Check that first quarter. I'm moving us along a little too quickly here. And Fatale's team already behind 7 0. Let's find a way to pin the Jackrabbits further back in their own territory. The winner gets either San Diego or North Dakota State. That game is starting, in fact, just officially underway in Fargo, North Dakota. Will it be a rematch of South Dakota State, North Dakota State next week? Well, thinking about Villanova coming here playing in this weather a little bit of snow that's not going to bother them bother them when you look at their conference you include Maine and New Hampshire two places that are very cold and can be snowy at times too. Christian now eight for eight throwing the football and on first down just a little toss to his left picks up about nine yards additional after the catch Marquise Lewis with the first down Brian White with a tackle and the Jacks with the first quarter lead after one here on ESPN three the NCAA FCS second round seven of them. It's the NCAA FCS second round presented by Northwestern Mutual. Jim Barber and John Gregory, who has played in weather far worse than this at Marshall. <laughs> at least I think he has. South Dakota State with the football to start that second quarter of play. Score updates, James Madison leading New Hampshire at the break, 31-7. First half almost over between Youngstown State and Jacksonville State. Youngstown leading 20-17. Sam Houston State, two first quarter touchdowns on Chattanooga, 14-0. And further north at the Fargo Dome, North Dakota State, San Diego, no score. Two minutes in, first quarter. Second down. Taryn Christian, starting quarterback to the Jackrabbits, eight for eight today for 89 and a touchdown. He operates from the shotgun and will hand it off in a big hole on the right side. We'll leave him with a third and manageable. Al Paris getting his first carry. He's a good goal line running back, downhill, physical. Kind of, kind of guy you like in this type of weather, huh? Yeah, it is. And a guy that, as you said before, typically he'll play and get a shot down by the goal line. But remember, Isaac Wallace out of this football game along with Daniel, the running back. So he may get the opportunity to spell. Mangarelli, when he's in the ball game, give him an opportunity to get a breather on the sideline. Mikey has shoulder issues, and Wallace did not pass concussion protocol. And the Wildcats make a stand on third down. Villanova is one of the best, top five in the country at third down stops. And as a result, with Jeff Wiley's tackle, Villanova gets the football back. So Brady Hale now coming up with his second point of the game after 43 the first time. And it starts to whip around these snowflakes a little stronger. Gus near 20 miles an hour. Torres Phillips back to return. What a kick. From the line of scrimmage, the 39 to the end zone. 61, a net of 41. Back with more on ESPN 3 of the playoffs. The snow continues to pick up. Let's review Villanova's season. Three losses among the nine wins to Pitt, holding Pitt to under 90 yards rushing. It's a game that John had a chance to witness up close and personal, and then losses to teams ranked at the time, number six in the country, JMU and Richmond. And a couple of those losses, two teams in the FCS playoff, and we mentioned before Pitt had the opportunity to see them first game this year. 
Good Zach bounces to the outside. And then first down, they'll spot him out of bounds in the 35 and a pickup of 15 yards for the junior out of Toms River, New Jersey. Christian Roseboom hunted him down. Good Zach's the type of guy that you like to run between the tackles, but he can fool you with some speed to the outside. We mentioned that game against Pittsburgh at the beginning of the year. He didn't get to play in that football game, and they missed him in it. But, boy, Villanova certainly competed in that game defensively played very well and they could have used him on the offensive side. Good Zach had a quad injury that kept him immobile for the first four games and you mentioned Christian Roseboom at his linebacker spot already four tackles to this point. Seven nothing South Dakota State on a short toss from quarterback Terry Christian to Dallas Goddard in the first quarter. There's Ryan Bell who's made a couple of Huge receptions for Villanova, even the Wildcats have yet to score. Ed Narsik looking to his right and throwing. Good Zach with a catch, but only a reception and run for two. And it puts Villanova in another third and long, not a spot that the Wildcats want to be in as Jesse Bobbitt is up to make the stop. That was a good play call and the fact that they anticipated anticipated a blitz coming and you could see the quarterback that time but Narzik recognizing it just getting it to his outside guys had some blocks down the field but just too many dark shirts there in the way nowhere to go for Villanova with the football. If Clint Brown had his preference as defensive coordinator of the Jacks he would pressure as much as possible and do it early in this game leaving his corners out on an island. That Narzik out of trouble for the moment and throwing middle of the field. Good quarterback recognition, able to hit Aaron Forbes. He is going to be short by about a yard, however. Fourth and one as Dallas Brown hit him before he got to the 45. And now a decision for this offense of Villanova. Yeah, we saw Villanova go for it earlier in this football game. It looks like now he's going to elect to punt this thing away. But how about that throw across the body for Bednarzik as he was going to his left the left-handed quarterback and boy he threw that way back to the center of the field that's a dangerous throw but able to get away with it I believe you saw Mark Ferranti in your picture moments ago he is the coach in waiting longtime assistant under Andy Talley in fact he actually played for Andy at another school besides Villanova and we have a whistle and a timeout's going to be taken by the Wildcats Villanova their second charge timeout of the first half hey John you think they're going to they're going to rethink this thing here? <laughs> I don't know. We'll take a look after we get a break. Fourth and one decision time for Villanova in a 7-0 game as the weather starts to become an element here in Brookings. ESPN's coverage of the FCS Championships continues. Quarterfinals Friday, 7 Eastern on ESPN2 for more info. On the NCAA.com, the official online home for all 90 NCAA championships. You can tell by the crowd, Wildcats have changed their mind. They're going to go for it on fourth and one. Big play here. Good check, didn't make it. South Dakota State football. 94, Kellen Solik with a tackle. They said penetration kills this time. Solik this time gets inside. Watch the penetration he gets. Gets his big arm on that leg of the running back there. Good Zach not going anywhere after that. He made the initial contact, had some help, but that's the second time this Villanova team has gone for it on fourth down and the second time that South Dakota State's defense has rise to the occasion. Well, they say Solik has played in the shadows of Cole Langer on the defensive front line, but... He's had a kind of a coming out party lately and includes a pick six this year. Yeah, had that against Northern Iowa. And he leads this team in sacks and tackles for loss, so been doing it all year long. Meanwhile, as they say, at the Fargo Dome, MJ Stump, 40-yard return for touchdown. Bison lead in its game against San Diego. 7-0 early second quarter. The winner of that game faces the winner of the game you're viewing here on ESPN3. Taron Christian still pitching a perfect game. 8 for 8 for 89 yards and a score. The only score of this game. Pretty good numbers for the Offensive Player of the Year in the Missouri Valley Football Conference. 
Second down and eight. Nine and a half to go in the first half. Angarelli bumps it to the outside, makes a man miss, and he gets swallowed up at the 41-yard line. Short gain on the play. That's Rashawn Stewart up to make the tackle. Stewart was really highly recruited out of high school, and, and they say he's a pretty good tackler. We'll watch him at the end of this. Physical. Size and strength for the free safety position. Very good. So Stewart was one of those guys that you want to have on your football team when his coaches went after him out of high school. Glad they got him. Kid born in New Orleans, Louisiana. It is third and six. Wildcat defense minus one drive has been tough today. Christian out of the backfield, first down and then some to the 30 yard line. Simple catch and throw. The throw and catch, and Mangarelli gets the first down. Jafonta Johnson at Shockley up to meet him. And so the chains move, and so does this drive for the Jackrabbits. He said an easy throw, but the reason why that play worked is he had two great blocks out there by his wide receivers. You know, not everyone's going to catch the football in every play, but you got to be able to block downfield. He had two guys down there that were able to get on their man and allow him to pick up the first down. To this point, Taron Christian has had five passes of 10 yards or better. Right now, the injured player is Rob Roll. He would be a tough loss for Villanova. Plays that free safety position, also can play in the box. And a fumble return against Pitt for a touchdown, and he is tied for first in the NCAA in picks with seven. Looks like they're looking at his eye there, and boy, you're right. Wouldn't that be a loss? He's the number one player in the FCS in interceptions this year with seven. And they need him against a team like South Dakota State that likes to throw the ball around. Hopefully, maybe it's just a contact, a contact lens or something like that that's bothering him. Well, good luck trying to find it on the field, right? Good play resumes. First and ten for South Dakota State. This is uh, Laurel and Hardy weather. And folks here love it. You know what? I've only been here for 48 hours. I like it too. <laughs> I do too. From the 30-yard line, there was some movement. Play moves on. Christian going to shoot it down the field. Incomplete at the five. Take a look at the physical contact and how number four Rob Roll got right in the middle of it and then rolled back. That's the first incompletion for Taron Christian after hitting nine straight. So Roll being examined could be an elbow problem. We'll wait to hear a little more. And it is now second and ten. 8.08 left, first half. Christian after the clap of the hands to throw to the near side. Not much available there. And on the reception, number 10, Alex Wilde. Trey Johnson, who has been also active from that safety position. He went to, and this will sound familiar, John, Steinbrenner High School in Tampa, Florida, named after the boss, the former and late owner of New York Yankees, George Steinbrenner. And Johnson, that guy that's a can be a field corner or boundary corner, a guy that gets involved in the run game, and you could see that last play there, his ability to get to the receiver in a hurry. Timeout. Villanova, their final charge timeout, the first half. 30 seconds, timeout. In the meantime, the Jackrabbits have all three timeouts remaining. Let's step aside. We're halfway through the second quarter. South Dakota State, when we come back, has a third and five. Seating capacity for this Dyke House Stadium is 19,340. On third down, South Dakota State is two of four. And on the season, converting almost 50% of third down opportunities. Karen Christian against a three-man rush. And they're still putting pressure on him. And he falls back at the 42-yard line. 
a loss of 17. This was with a three-man front and dropping eight. Boy, you're right here. Watch Wiley get to the outside, the defensive end here. As Christian tries to get to the outside, you know what he does is he stays wider than him. That's that edge we were talking about, not letting the quarterback get outside. And Jeff Wiley, just a freshman, but it's a great play there. And his defensive teammates recognize what he did on that play. In the meantime, Rob Roll is headed to the locker room as they try to examine what problems he may be having with his eye. Now a penalty flag, and that's going to be a false start. Offense, number 32, five-yard penalty. Down. It's not entirely a bad thing because the punt will give them five more yards of space to kick. A penalty on the running back Kyle Paris. Six, four, eight. That's our referee Scott Root. The umpires Chuck Butterfield. Headlinesman Terry White. Rob Quellos, the line judge. Side judge Jeffrey Young. Field judge is Daniel Wilkins. The back judge Chris Story and Dave Heisinski is our replay official. Big Sky Conference, ball landing. Gunners can't get to it, and the football will come back to the 20-yard line. John, let's revisit the brackets. We know who the favorite is, but today Jacksonville State and somebody quite familiar to Nebraska. Football fans is leading his team over Youngstown State 20 to 17. A lot of people think the Citadel is going to be a tough out. And uh, how about three Dakota teams playing all within, what, 300 miles of each yeah. other today? Yeah. James Madison is having its way against New Hampshire 31 7. Now it is 31 15 in the third quarter. Yeah, the one thing you notice about all of that, of both of the teams today, they represent a conf both conferences that have put a lot of teams into this FCS championship playoff. And updating North Dakota State, it is still 7 0 in that game, 6 40 to go, first quarter. Well, San Diego two years ago had to go to Montana to play, and now it's up in Fargo. <laughs> so it, it pays to get a bye if you can, or fortunate in a position to not have to uh, play so far away and in a cold environment. Yeah, fortunately for them, though, they're in a dome, so that's true. <laughs> they get a little bit of a break today. That is a big help. They are going up against the crowd, though, which can be uh, pretty lively there. Yeah, worse than snow, right? Yep. Second and four, under six to go first half. Wildcats hanging tough. Ben Nardzik over the middle has got a man. And up to midfield. Big time play by Jared McClinton. McClinton, the sophomore receiver from Pennsylvania, brought down by Micaiah Slade. Just 5'7", 155 pounds they list McClinton at. And surprised we haven't seen a little bit more of him. You can see him come across the field there, finding a void in the defense. And... Bednarzik doing a nice job getting in the football. He's a guy you'll see jet sweeps with him a lot of motion. We have not seen that out of the offense so far today. That play John good for 21. Still a 7-0 football game as the Wildcats defense has kept them alive. And good Zach now running behind his front five and able to carry for a first down of 10 yards. He's got some pretty good fellows up there. Brad Seaton. Nico D'Angelo, Matt Donahue, Luzi Chazer, and along with Louis Ethan Greenidge. Donahue and Chazer that time, boy, they were leading the way. They had nobody to block. Everybody was gone, so they were looking around trying to find somebody, but the thing you want to do there is keeping your head moving on a swivel, find somebody you can go after. Them. On first and ten option. Pitch at the last minute for a loss. Uh, close to five yards. Good Zach was lucky even caught it before he got snowed under, so to speak, by Dallas Brown. Dallas Brown does a nice job of watching it, watch he plays the running back here underneath, and then he recognized the pitch going to the outside, and he gets out there, and Good Zach nowhere to go. And great recognition and way to string it out, Dallas Brown. Officially a loss of three, second and 13. Keep in mind, Wildcats out of timeouts. Play clock at five. Down to one. Got the playoff. Here comes pressure. The throw incomplete. Trying to hit Alex Padovani on the outside. Brings us to third and 13. 
Bednarzik, typically a guy that's very accurate with the football, over 60% completions on the year, 66% last game, and that one just seemed to get away from the lefty. Zach's number so far today in the snow, 7 of 10 for 105. Needs to pick up a bunch here. Got out of trouble for the moment. Still going with a football. And it'll be fourth and short. And Bednarczyk took what could have been a huge loss into a positive game. South Dakota State's defense that time had two deep. And they had man under coverage that time. And when you play that type of defense, this is really the only play that you have as a quarterback. Because it'll run off those defenders as they're starting to cover man-to-man -man coverage. And by the time you recognize it, the quarterback could be 5, 10 yards down the field. So it was a big pickup here and made it fourth and manageable. That's a look at Christian Roseboom. His defense set to go to war here on fourth and four. Play clock at two. Then Nards a quick throw on the slant. Caught by McClinton. Should be enough for the first down. That's an almost impossible play to defend, and it's a it's a hot read by the quarterback to his receiver. McClinton with a catch. Move the chains. Tackle made by Chris Bolster. It happens so quick. You have to have a, an excellent throw and good hands by the receiver that time. And we mentioned McClinton just 5'7", 155 pounds. He knows he's going to take a hit on that, but able to hold on to it to pick up a big first down for Villanova. And that keeps the football out of, out of that high-flying offense of South Dakota State, which has been stymied really for the most part today. Press set of downs from the 32. Touchdown. An extra point with tie Intended for Brad Chadbourne, who has some of the better hands on the receiving core. Stops the clock with 2.41 left. Boy, he had Torres Phillips coming across the middle of the field that time. It was almost like Phillips needed to recognize that it was zone coverage and just sit there and give Bednarzik an opportunity to throw it to somebody. He was running across the field like it was man coverage, and Bednarzik would have led him right into a defender. So good choice to really just throw that football away. John, in this kind of swirling snow and wind, can you even think field goal as you get closer? Well, they, they want to get some points on the board somehow, some way in this first half. Aaron Forbes carries the football. He suffered through some ankle problems in the year, appears to be healthy today. Jesse Bobbitt. Roseboom up to make the tackle. Well, the coaches say, well, by December, everybody's been banged up a little bit. We're not kidding. Forbes, a guy that's averaging over six yards every time he touches the football per rush. That leads this football team and has eight rush TDs on the year. Another important play of the game on third and four. Football, the 26. Bednarzik trying to set up a screen. And let number 20 do the rest. Matt Goodzak with those great feet and that great instinct for the first down marker gets it to the 18-yard line and a pickup at eight, and more importantly, a first down. And a great play call here, anticipating maybe you're going to get a blitz, and you could see the lineman out front that time. The timing of that screen was perfect, and you've got to be a football team that you just don't put that late in the year. That's the thing you develop over the year. Timing on screens are so important. He gets the blocks and the first down. Nova now eight first downs in the game, John. Quarterback keep that nice it inside the 15. No timeouts remaining for the Wildcats, but no need to dramatically hurry here either because the longer you take, the less possibility that the Jackrabbits will get the ball back. Andy Talley, his final season after 32 years at Villanova, he took over in the early 80s when Villanova didn't even have a football team. And a penalty flag. Play clock is not the issue here, so let's see what is. There's no foul on the play. All right, that explains it. <laughs> Simple as that. 12th play of the drive. Clock starts again, and we are now officially under a minute. And eventually Villanova will have to go with some urgency. Especially if 
They run a play, and the clock continues to move. Play clock now down to eight. 45 for the first half. Ben Nardzik, little freeze option out to the near side. Clock continues to move, though, after the catch. It's a first down. It will stop for a second, and then it'll restart on the reception by Padovani. Padovani only had eight receptions coming into this football game all year long. He's been a big play guy on those eight receptions. He's averaging over 22 yards per catch, so getting a lot of action today back in the lineup after being injured. So here. what do you do here with no timeouts left? Yeah, I look for my big tight end, Ryan Bell. He's dangerous down by the goal line. You have to keep an eye on him. He's 85. Ben Narzik looking for him, flushed out, going to throw to the end zone. Ball up for grabs and knocked down with 14 to go. Dallas Brown back defending, presenting the, preventing the score. And it'll be second and goal with 14 left. And that ball was intended for Ryan Bell, the tight end, not the way he wanted to get it to him. They were looking to get it to him quickly out in the flat, but Narzik extending the play as Bell comes off the field here. Again, no timeouts remaining in the first half for the Wildcats. Second and goal. Down 7 nothing. And South Dakota State will use a timeout. That allows the Wildcats to reset their offense, John, and I would think that'd be important with the fact that the Cats have no first-half timeouts remaining. We mentioned that Andy Talley took over in 84. Let's go back to that hallowed year. The Apple computer replaces the Mac, the death of soul singer and legend Marvin Gaye. The Soviet Union had a big-time boycott. The Boss released his album Born in the USA. Jeopardy started its syndicated version. Ronald Reagan became president. Marshall University, John Gregory's alma mater, first winning season in 20 years, but they did it before John. Uh, that's probably the most important of all those yeah, facts we came up with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they set the tone and we just tried to build on it. But. I gotcha. Well, the dedication to Andy Talley in his final season is most evident here. In fact, uh, if you go on campus, you see one of those uh, fat heads that resembles the coach. Pleasure to talk to, and will this be his final game, or will Villanova play on? Now Villanova's offense, Changa Hodge, number 88, inserted into this ball game. We haven't seen him. I was thinking possibly that they could use him, a great freshman wide receiver, and go to that wide side of the field, but they've got two defenders out there to match him up. He is number 88 in white. And Narzik, got to keep the play going. Looking to the end zone and throwing it away. So we're down to seven. That's a smart play because if he takes a sack as Solik was pursuing him, then the first half is over. Boy, he had Aaron Forbes. He was too far to his left side. There is a perfect look right there. Aaron Forbes was open. He didn't realize there was somebody behind him on the defensive side that time. And Jesse Bobbitt coming to cover him. He was waiting, just waiting for him to pick it off. Wholesale substitutions for the Wildcats as they play into the end zone where the snow is coming in. And they have decided to not risk the possibility of not scoring at all. And Gerard Smith is on for an attempted field goal with John Hinchin to hold. And before that happens, the Jackrabbits take another timeout. This to be a 23-yard attempt. What about the strategy here, John? Not going for the touchdown, the tie, and attempting the field goal instead. No, I think it's a good decision. You want to get some points on the board before this half ends, and too, too close of a game not to do that. Defense has been the biggest factor in this game. We've seen only one touchdown. Turnovers have certainly been at a minimum, but these stops by both teams on third down have been really impressive. It's what we thought coming into this game. We thought Villanova's offense against South Dakota's well, opposite of that, South Dakota State's offense against Villanova's defense, but both of these defenses have stood up today, and Villanova trying to get some points on the board here late. Thought that was interesting. It was South Dakota State called the timeout. It looked like the play clock was going to run out. I thought if it did, no big deal. You back up, back it up a little bit and get a better angle. Now a change of heart, which Villanova did earlier. 
Seven seconds to go, third and six, and South Dakota State recognizes that this wasn't likely the play they were going to see. Timeout. And so now the Jackrabbits take a timeout. Well, what do they call that in football? A chess match? <laughs> I like it. That yeah, won't surprise me if Andy Talley goes back to kicking the football here now. Well, what's the best decision, in your opinion, at this point of the game? I think you kick the field goal and get the points on the board. You're going to need them in the second half anyway, so uh, why not take the three points now? And Villanova does get the football to start the second half. This is how the Wildcats from Villanova, PA, are keeping warm today. Temperatures in the 30s. It has dropped, though, because of the snow and the wind that's been apparent here. Next week, the real Arctic freeze comes in, so you and I are getting out just in time. It's going to be 15 below wind chills, they say. Uh, I'd come back. I'd be happy to do that. This is a great atmosphere. What a beautiful stadium. Brand new facility. Well, if they can complete a play in less than seven seconds, if it's unsuccessful, they can still try a field goal. As long as the clock stops. Then Narzik over the middle, ball caught, is it enough? Touchdown! What a big time play! Alex Padovani on the reception. Villanova gambles and wins. Boy, and you're right, it's a gamble because if he doesn't make it into the end zone, then the time's going to run out and there's not going to be a score. Touchdown, he's under further review. And they're going to take a look at this and... My first indication or first look says maybe he does not get it across the goal line here. Well, in the snow, it may be difficult to see. The replays that the Big Sky officials like Dave Pizinski will see are the ones we're presenting to you. And they're going to take a little bit of time on this one. Body doesn't have to be across the goal. The ball does. And it takes indisputable video evidence to overrule the call on the field. That's why the calls on the field are so significant. And that call was a touchdown there. And like you said, I don't know if there's enough evidence to overturn that. That was probably the best look that we had on that last play. And you know, when he made the catch, he turned toward his left. And maybe the nose of that football was on the goal line. The official was right there with a great look at it. So. We'll see, but for Villanova, boy. After review, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. How key was that for them to be able to get that across the goal line because there would not have been enough time to get to the line of scrimmage and run another play. Villanova, six points, sitting on seven. That would tie the game. Holland Linden will snap. John Hinchin, third-string quarterback and punter, will hold. And Gerard Smith will try to tie the game. Villanova 7, South Dakota State 7. You know what? It's Andy Talley's last year. Why not go for it, huh? <laughs> it's the playoffs. That's right. No risk, no gain. Well, you, instead of three, you get the seven just... And we saw him twice during that first half on fourth down go for it. And you may be right. You know, he's got... Nothing to lose. Who's going to look at him and say, ah, you should have went for it, right? Sure. <laughs> well, we have the luxury of pinning him down and asking him here in a matter of a couple seconds. Mm -hmm. Good-looking drive in that snow. 15 plays, 80 yards in six and a half minutes, and it ties the game at seven. And in the shades of Bill Belichick of New England, you score at the end of the first half, you get the ball to start the second half to try to score. Belichick's made a career on being successful at that. <laughs> over his years as head coach of New England. Isn't it funny how it works out that way for the good teams, right? Yeah. That's what makes them good teams, I guess. That's right. And halftime, we'll visit a uh, man who still keeps statistics at age 106 at the University of Virginia. Great feature. you want to join us then. Clock does not move, so there is still time for a play left, I believe. One second tipped off the clock. And Andy Telly, the head coach of Villanova, telling his guys back up there's still time left for one. The Wildcats came with their calling card of defense, and that has made a huge difference today, holding a team in South Dakota State averaging 37 points a game. 
And I think Andy Talley, when you were saying everybody moved back, I think he was telling his team to go into the locker room. He's arguing right now that two seconds had to have come off the clock in that situation there. So he's not happy with the officials right now. Got three defenders as close as the 30 yard line. Christian will throw on first down, down the middle of the field. Incomplete, first half over. What a first half it's been. South Dakota State struck in the first quarter at a 7 0 lead, and the ball moments later, Villanova makes a stand, and then the Wildcats march 80 yards in 15 plays in six and a half minutes and tie the game on a very gutsy call by the Villanova coaching staff to negate the field goal attempt and shoot for the touchdown that was accomplished with two seconds to go. Andy Talley in his final season, the Wildcats. Coach, let's talk about the move you made after the first half. What made you decide to change your mind from a field goal attempt to a touchdown? Well, you know, we're playing to win. Uh, I think they're a little better than us. And right now, things weren't going our way. I just tried to change the momentum. Same reason why I went for it on fourth down at midfield. I mean, you got to play, man. We're in a playoff game fighting for our life. You got to go for it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> you know, offensively, they're very good on the offensive side. You guys are on the defensive side. What do you tell your team in the locker room at halftime? Well, you know, Tano Passigno was out of the game. Uh, he tore his thumb up, but he's back now, and that'll help us. We were trying to hold hold it until he got back. But, you know, hey, it's 7-7 game. We're, we're in it, man. We're playing, and we're playing to win, and we're going to take whatever chances we got to take. Thank you, Andy. Good luck. Go get warm, please. Okay, great. Thanks. 7-7 at the break. When we come back, we're going to visit uh, an old-time statistician, literally, at age 106 here on ESPN3. As the second round of the NCAA FCS playoffs, got a good one here. The game tied at the break. We're at halftime at Brookings for the NCAA FCS second round playoffs. No laptop, no fancy analytics, just a good old fashioned pen and paper is all Dr. John Risher is needed to record stats as a volunteer at Virginia's home football games since 1963. For more than five decades, everything that happens between these lines. Good touchdown! The kid does it again! Touchdown! Holy cow. Finds its way to these lines. My memory is good enough to remember the good things and bad enough to forget the bad. Dr. John Risher is a University of Virginia football statistician and the program's oldest living football <laughs> alum. That's not so good. Born in 1910, <laughs> John turned 106 this past May. It's the one number he doesn't like to talk about. I tell people to quit spreading it around because I had a problem getting dates when I was 90 and 106, I don't have a chance. <laughs> Nearly a century ago, when he was nine, John's family moved to Charlottesville, near Lambeth Field, where the Cavaliers played. I was like a hungry fish. I got hooked. From birth, he's been kind of built into Virginia athletics, sneaking on rooftops to watch Virginia football at, at Lambeth Field. And when he got old enough, he got a job selling concessions just so he could get into the games for free. In 1931, then a student at Virginia, John found his way onto Lambeth, playing in just one game for the Cavaliers. <laughs> that was a joke. We had a lot of injuries and I was standing close to the coach when a person in my position got hurt and he said, Russia, get in there. I think I was in on five plays. So I gave up the football. 30 years later, he found his way back. John's friend, Paul Wussman, a volunteer statistician, invited him to the press box. For the next 52 years, they charted offensive drives together. When Paul died last year, John considered retiring. I put my arm around him and I was like, Dr. Risher, it's important that you're here. I don't know what I would do without you. That's for the red, that's for the opponent. For the opponent. 
Yeah, that's for us. He said, oh no, we get confused sometimes. And when we do, we look over your shoulder and see what you have on your chart and we use it. So I said, well, I'll see you in the fall. This fall, John got a new partner, a third year student, just 20 years old. Binoculars, laptops, and devices surround them, but John still relies on his eyes, his pens, and his calculator. He checks his work, he shows his work, he hardly considers it work. Just because I love the place. That's simple. <laughs>Great story, age 106 and still going strong. More from halftime as the FCS playoffs continue from South Dakota State. In the NCAA FCS second round here from South Dakota State, Villanova 7, SDSU 7. Meanwhile, James Madison having its way after a 31-7 lead at the break, leading 45-14 in the third. Sam Houston State had the first three touchdowns of the game. Chattanooga is catching up. Youngstown State leading Jacksonville State. Bo Pelini's team up 27-17. And at the Fargo Dome, North Dakota State, San Diego. San Diego still hanging tough, trailing 7-0 in the second quarter. Welcome back to Brookings, South Dakota. Got a good one today on ESPN3 in the second round. Uh, the FCS playoffs, Jim Barber, the former Marshall quarterback, John Gregor with 50-yard line seats, albeit a little bit distance from the snow today and on the frolic going out on the stands and the sidelines. Let's speak to the game we'll again that Villanova made at the end of the first half, negating the field goal, going for six, getting six. Yeah, a little surprising to me. I thought they were going to kick the field goal and at least try to get three points on the board going into at halftime. I thought that would be a lift for them, but how about that? Coach says, hey, we're going to be aggressive and go for it, and they get seven because of it. For South Dakota State, John, this game started so well. They had a good-looking scoring drive that ate up 76 yards and a lot of time on the clock. Yeah, how about the catch right there by the big tight end as he gets down the field, and this team does what they do, and that's running the football and mixing in a pass. They've got a great quarterback that's very athletic. We haven't seen him run the ball a lot in that first half, but gets a touchdown pass, and for South Dakota State, they get on the board early. That was Christian to Goddard, good for six points. But then quarterback on the other side, Zach Bednarczyk, uses his legs, and they got themselves out of difficulty. They were able to move the football. And he can do it. He can extend plays early. He was running the football quite a bit. Then they get down late in the game. They decide, or late in that first half, they decide they're going to go for it versus kicking the field goal. And because of that, you know, that's a tie ball game. Score with two seconds to go in the toss to Alex Padovani, and they've eliminated South Dakota State to 20 yards today rushing and have also controlled the football. 17 to 13 minutes. We hope to chat with John Stickelmeyer, the head coach of the Jackrabbits, upon our return. About set to start the third quarter. John Stickelmeyer, the head coach of South Dakota State, joins us. John, in the scoring drive for the Jackrabbits, you accomplished 76 yards. Overall for the first half, just 120. What are they doing that's keeping you at bay? Well, they're getting off of blocks on our runs and making plays. You know, we've got them blocked. We just got to stay on blocks. And then they're very quick. You can see them close uh, real fast on the perimeter. And uh, we just, again, we need to stay on blocks, be patient. And when we get a chance to make a play, make a play. Defensively, Coach, you guys have been able to hold them to seven points. They score late in that ball game down there. What do you tell your team at halftime after the late score for Villanova? I told them they get, they're guaranteed one half of football left. Uh -huh. we got 19 seniors that uh, I know that hit them in the heart, but that motivates them. So that's what we got left. we got to play our best football. Thank you, John. You bet. Updating North Dakota State, 14-0 score that game. That has now reached halftime in favor of the defending champion, Bison. We're taking a look at South Dakota State warming up right now. That's the quarterback, Taron Christian, and you saw moments earlier in your picture as well. Christian Roseboom. A couple of injury updates for Villanova. Mentioned we had not seen Tano Passigno, and Tano actually played one down in the first half. Tore up his thumb. He has been repaired since then. He will play the second half. And Rob Roll, their fine free safety, has an eye injury. He is questionable for the second half. 
So, you're up to speed now. We're set to start the third quarter, and Villanova gets the ball first. Boy, and that was a defense that played pretty good against a team that puts a lot of points on the board without your number one defensive end. A guy with 21 and a half tackles for loss, 11 sacks on the year. Tano Passigno, big number 92. You can't miss him there. Six foot seven, 290 pounds. He's taped up the thumb, done whatever he's needed to do, and jumping around. It looks like he's ready to go. Yeah, you have that feeling that uh, if he's able to use that hand and get himself wrapped around a quarterback, he'll be just fine. He stands at 6'7". He is 290 pounds. The NFL is already taking a look at a guy that the coaching staff feels has a lot of pro tools. Still raw, they feel, in a lot of ways, so still developing his game. And for his career, he's forced four fumbles, recovered three fumbles, also blocked three kicks. For the Wildcats, Matt Gutzak, 20, is deep. Could be a very entertaining and dramatic second half in a game a lot closer than many people thought. Good Zach into the snow with a reception from the four. And he carries across the 20 yard line. That's where the Wildcats will start the second half. Winner faces either San Diego or North Dakota State. Again, that's a 14 nothing score in favor of North Dakota State. And an injured player on the opening kickoff of this second half. That's Cody Hazlitt, number 12. He is the starting Sam linebacker for the Jackrabbits. See if he's able to go when his team is out on defense. And actually, they're defensively set now, so he will have to miss a play or two. Zach Bednarczyk, the quarterback to the flat. Dangerous pass. That could have been a pick six. Dallas Brown was in perfect position to catch and return it for a score. Now Brown gets there in a hurry, too. He recognizes this, and... He had a choice there, either try to go through the football. It looks like the receiver was... Yeah, excuse me, that's Jordan Brown. Yeah, between him and the ball that time. So he goes through the receiver toward the football and dislodges that. Nice play by Brown getting there in a hurry. Second and ten. A run to the outside and a jet sweep. And Jared McClinton is dropped for a huge loss near the 15-yard line. Ryan Arif, number 90, was chasing him down, and he had plenty of help in that secondary as well. From Chris Bolster. There was a flag on the play. Illegal block below the waist. Number 25, offense. 15-yard penalty. Second down. Well, the Wildcats, John, ended the first half with great momentum, and they're starting to negate some of that to start the second half. Yeah, and that's something that they did right there when you could see Jarrett McClinton coming coming around as a wide receiver. That is a, mo a lot more like their offense runs. They do a lot of jet sweep. We didn't see that in the first half, and interesting that they decide they're going to come out in the second half and use McClinton, the wide receiver slash running back. He's actually got more rushes than he does receiving. Penalty was declined, third and very long, third and 15. That Nardzik against a four-man rush will keep the football and be tackled in open space at the 23-yard line. So that stalls the drive. Got some of those yards back. Open field tackled by Callan Solick, and so the football goes back to the Jacks. Number 54, let's go out for one play. Solick. He mentions his name quite a bit today so far and his ability to get to the quarterback and penetrate that time he recognized it. You're talking about a nose guard that's 200, 320 pounds able to come off the line of scrimmage and chase down the quarterback. John Hinchin is back at his 10 to punt for Villanova. He 
now it looks like everybody's set on both sides of the ball. Play clock at seven. Villanova taking its time, a low line drive kick. And despite the fall, good field position for the Rabbits at the 48-yard line on the catch the on the field. by Marquise Lewis. Go back to October inside the Fargo Dome, North Dakota State, South Dakota State. Jack Rabbits have to make up two touchdowns halfway through the third quarter. Well, there's one of them to Dallas Goddard. And with time running out and down by four, it's got it again in the end zone. Shakes off his man. The Jackrabbits win it. Actually, that was Jake Winicky with a catch, and they stunned the Bison 19 17. In the third quarter this year, the Jackrabbits have outscored their opponents 122 to 56. North Dakota State on an East and Stick touchdown throw, now leading San Diego 21 0. Just about to go to half at the dome. South Dakota State lost to that North Dakota State in 2014 on the last play of the game. They have a mantra since then that said, hey, last second. And they talk about that all the time. Well, how about that last play of the game they win? Or last plays the mantra and they win on the last second. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Could be a rematch with Villanova right now is holding strong and trying to prolong the season of retiring coach Andy Talley. Taron Christian's got a man 30 yard line incomplete. Had Goddard as his intended receiver. Let's talk about how Villanova has defended guys like Goddard and Jake Winicky so far today, John. Well, they're doing a nice job of taking away the middle of the field, a place that Goddard likes to live down there and had a lot of success. But I would continue to go to that guy. He's that good of an athlete. You have to find a way to get him the football. And it seems to me after those first two plays that Jack Rabbit offense decide they're going to start to open it up a little bit more here in the second half. We saw in your picture number six, Jason Sinius and Rashawn Stewart back in that secondary for Villanova. Got to pick up 10 here to keep the drive going. Christian on the move and throwing on the run, and he one hopped it at the 40 yard line. And so Villanova, despite on a short punt, having to defend just half the field, able to do just that. Yeah, their defense did what they needed to do was get off the field quickly and win a field position battle. And now it's up to their punter to try to keep them in the same situation. But you could see passing, you know, that time for Villanova, the big defensive end we mentioned. He was the guy on the chase that time of the quarterback. This is Brady Hale's fourth kick of the game. And Jason Sinius is deep. Our referee Scoot and Scott Root. There's no foul on the play. Fourth down. Big Sky officiating crew today. Flags are picked up, and now we'll get set to punt. And Brady Hale. Who averages on the season 42 yards a punt and today has one that reached 61 yards is ready to go. Aaron Christian got off to that electric start hitting his first eight and nine of nine. And since then he is just one of six for five yards. Still the Gunners do their work for South Dakota State and they pin Villanova deep. Good play out there by Dalton Cox, 53. It's the NCAA FCS second round presented by Northwestern Mutual. Two minutes gone by, second half. John Gregory, Jim Barber, our excellent ESPN crew. Live from South Dakota in a 7-7 game, and this is Villanova on offense. 90 yards away from the lead. That good Zach carries for the day, 11 carries for 43 yards. Cole Langer teams up with Solik from that inside position defensively up to make the tackle.
No fumbles in this game, no picks so far. Despite the weather, very well played football game. Minimal amount of penalties. And on the receiving end, Torres Phillips gets the first down, gets him out of difficulty. That's some of that motion we were talking about with wide receivers. That time they had Torres Phillips come in. They had three wide outs to the far side of the field. They motioned him in and then really hit him behind that big offensive line. He came across the field into the flat wide open. Nice, well played or well designed play that time for Villanova. Able to get out of some difficulty there, John, up to the 25 yard line. If Villanova wins, we would head to North Dakota State. If the Bison win, if the Bison lose, Villanova likely would be hosting next week with a victory here today. Good Zach off tackle for a couple. We mentioned so, so much about how Nova's defense is so strong. But South Dakota State's defense has had its moments this year. And think back to the fact that they allowed 28 points a game, but they've been effective in the red zone a number of occasions this year. And right now they're locked in a real defensive duel. Yeah, well, one thing they've done, and when we talked with the coaches this week, they wanted to take away the run from Villanova. Where they've had some success doing that. You haven't seen Villanova break anything long to this point. And Narzik would like to change that on second and eight. Ball caught, 40-yard line. Ryan Bell on the reception. That's his very handy tight end. And it's a first down. Jesse Bobbitt was defending. I said but Narzik likes to throw the... The long pass, he's got great touch. This one, he underthrew. It looks like he had Bell to the outside, just wanted to lead him toward the sideline, and Bell had to come back and make a nice play on this because the defender was in his face. The defender didn't know the ball was coming. So it's a first down. Now at the 41 of Villanova, a lot of misdirection on first down. And on the play, a simple carry by Javon White out of Telford, Pennsylvania. Both Roseboom and Bobbitt up to greet him. They have combined on a number of tackles today. It is second down. One thing Villanova is winning today, John, is time of possession. And Wildcats felt if they're able to do that, they could win the football game. Well, they're a team that has done that all year long. Their ability to be balanced. And they're a team that, you know, their number is 30. They have to score 30 points when they do that. They're a team that has a lot of success. They release good Zach instead go over to middle to Bell, who's going to be a couple of yards short. Ryan Bell now his third reception of the game. Dallas Brown with a tackle. Brings us to third and two. So you're Sam Venuto, the offensive coordinator. Been throwing a lot of misdirection out there. What do you like here? On third down. Well, I like to roll my quarterback here and give him a run pass threat and see what happens because remember throughout that first half, every time they've tried to run it on fourth down, this South Dakota State defense has been up to the task to stop them. Wildcats have hit two of their last three on third down. Go with a handoff to the end, and it should be enough for the first down by Jarrett McClinton. To play in that slot, the outside receiver can be a ball carrier. On a jet sweep, he does a myriad of things as Banasek makes the tackle, but not before the sticks move again. And more clock continues to move as well. Aaron Forbes got a great block that time. If he doesn't get the block out front there, then there's no way they pick up that first down, but he was able to cut the defender. And because of that, Aaron, uh, their, their back was able to get another half yard. Villanova now 13 first downs to the game, just seven for the Jackrabbits. Fresh set of downs, now into STSU territory. And Narzik down a man on the little field. He's got a man and it's incomplete. Oh man, Padovani had a chance at around the 10 yard line. It goes as a long, incompleted pass. Boy, Padovani had to slow down just a bit, but Narzik let this ball go. It looked like his right foot slipped out and Really kind of threw that behind it, but this is a ball that Padovani will tell you all the time that he should have come up with here, and that was a big opportunity to make a big play. We said before, 22 and a half yards per catch Padovani had coming into this ball game, a big play receiver for this team. His face getting a little muddied so far here as we go back to work. Andy Talley, 32 seasons at Villanova, and now the Wildcats will use a timeout. 
And you always wonder about burning timeouts early in the third quarter when you're not near the goal line. No, and you remember what happened at the end of the first half. They were out of timeouts there, and fortunately they were able to get that score because that time would have run out for them. Let's take a TV timeout six minutes into the third quarter. James Madison putting the wood to New Hampshire today. 55-15, Brian Shore has thrown for 371 and five touchdown passes. Back here, 7-7 seven, seven game, Wildcats second and 10, just inside STSU territory. Jim Barber, John Gregory. Good looking football game today in the playoffs. Play action, Ben Narzik throwing. Got a man wide open, 25-yard line. Ball caught, first down. Torres Phillips on yet another big reception for the Wildcats. We've seen this Villanova offense play fake. The quarterback. We actually got a number 79, 15-yard penalty, second down. Brad Seaton, it's called for a blow to the face. It's going to cost him 15 yards and a first down and a penetration. Deep into South Dakota State territory. Mark that one down. That could be big. And not a guy that usually makes a mistake in seat. And he's the best offensive lineman on this team. Second team CAA. And I was just talking about this Villanova team has been running their quarterback to the play faking and booting him to the near side. That time it was a throwback. Again, a nice design play that unfortunately had to come back for Villanova. So now it is second and 25 for the Wildcats, back at their own 36. We'll set up a screen to try to make up some of the yardage. They haven't had many penalties in this game, but when they've hit, they've been significant. Only a few on some special teams, but we look at this screen here. We saw Villanova earlier run a screen that had some success to pick up a first down. This time they do it again and had some blockers out. But how about that pursuit by South Dakota State's defense? Guys following the play, hustling. It's the little things like that that prevent that first down, allows you to get off the field as a defense. Jack Rabbits have a three defensive man front. Dropping eight. That darts it. He's got a man over the middle. Well short of the first down on the open field tackle. Christian Roseboom was back defending. He had plenty of help there as well, though, from Chris Bolster. And that'll do it. So the penalty kills the Wildcats' chances of taking the lead. And now they must give up the ball. You mentioned eight guys dropping back, just rushing three that time, just throwing underneath, moving the chains a little bit. But for Villanova, they missed an opportunity on a long touchdown pass that was dropped, possibly. And then, as you said, the penalty. Bolster got the initial hit on that play. And some pretty evident movement on the right side of the Wildcats side of the Bolster. field. Kicking team, number seven, five yard penalty, fourth down. Matt Rushton is number seven for Villanova. There it is again, one of those penalties on special team. Not, an, not affecting a whole lot, but that's where we've seen most of the mistakes today. Clock continues to run. More than half of the third quarter already gone. The winner to face San Diego or North Dakota State. Right now the Bison have a three touchdown lead. Little hesitation after the catch. This drive will start from the 26-yard line. ESPN's coverage of the FCS championships continues with the quarterfinals either Friday at 7 Eastern or possibly on Saturday. ESPN2. For more information, go to NCAA.com. That's the official online home for all 90 NCAA championships. First Saturday in the month of December. That usually means in the FCS something big is happening. That's right. That means you still have a chance for a championship. And that's what Coach Talley told us. Hey, we didn't come here on the road to not go after it and take every opportunity we can. Yeah, if you mentioned the, mentioned, uh, the interview at halftime that Tally was explaining to us why he went for it, 
with seven seconds to go in the first half. No timeouts remaining. Could have kicked the field goal. Simply said, hey, it's the playoffs. We came here to win. And I was thinking kicking it was the right move, but after listening to him, he convinced me, yeah, you know what? <laughs> Why not go for it? Again, took over Villanova football after it had disbanded football in 1980. Jack Rabbit second and one. That'll be a first down. Angarelli carries. Steve with a stop. Chains move. And for South Dakota State, they need desperately to get something going since the first quarter before that last one had six rushes for eight yards, and they were just two of seven passing for 15 yards through that second quarter. So they have desperately in the need of some offense here. And you're talking about a team that ranks high in the FCS in many categories. All bets seem to be off, though, once you get to the playoffs. Taren Christian dropped. For a loss on the play of three. Brian Osi, the big defensive end that time on the edge. Opasigno gets all of the acclaim there, being 6'7 on his side of it, but Ose, he's had probably the best year of his career here, the senior. He is one of those rare transfers that Villanova accepts. Came from Temple University. And one of the reasons they took him is they were recruiting him big out of high school and they weren't able to get him. And Coach Daly and this Villanova team does not accept a whole lot of transfers, as you said. He, he basically says, I don't want other people's problems. So eventually he comes full circle. Second and 13, Christian throwing incomplete. Karen Christian got off to this white hot start. As Brian Osei applied the pressure, but since then, John, he has been unable to find any kind of luck. Can you pin it on anything in, in particular? No, just a good defense here, and you can see again Osei coming off the inside that time, a move where he comes up through the middle and gets to the quarterback, Christian, and boy, you don't want to see him give up limping. Part of his tools is his, his ability to run the football, and we haven't seen a whole lot of that today, but... Good to see him get up off the deck. And this is where Villanova's been limited today defensively. Tano Passigno hurt his thumb on the first play of scrimmage in the first quarter. Has come back, but obviously didn't play any in that first quarter. And the ball retrieved by Christian back in the 31. And South Dakota State has got to give it up. Watch Passigno come off from your left side of your screen here that time. Boy, he was off the line quick. He was lined up way outside in a track stance that time and comes off the edge quickly. And I think... Christian actually felt that pressure, came up into the pocket and dropped the football. I don't think Passanio got his hand on his arm to be able to knock that football away. Sinius and Phillips are deep. For Villanova, 4.30 to go, third quarter. It'll bounce at the 30. Did it hit somebody? Well, Villanova recovered the football. Certainly everybody was responding as if it was a live ball, and the officials are indicating such but the Wildcats get the ball in the game that still doesn't have a turnover DJ White able to recover that's huge Going on the field ball touch the receiving team but recovered by receiving team first down Villanova we're hard to see whether that ball was touched or not but you know when you're on the field you don't know whether he did or not so jumping on it when he saw the defenders for South Dakota State trying to jump on the football. He thought, I better get on top of it, and fortunately he did. It appears, at least by way the officials call, that Trey Johnson was the down lineman who came in contact with the ball. Either way, Villanova has it at its own 29, still locked in a tie game. That narts it to the flat incomplete. Trying to go play action with Javon White, set up a little screen as well as Kellen Sulik was applying pressure second and ten you know it's still way too early to call but don't you get the feeling that this might be a, an overtime game <laughs> well it is early to call that but maybe maybe what it comes down to is some type of special teams play or who makes the mistake who turns the football over in this game second and ten Great to have you along wherever you're watching today. This is playoff football from the FCS. Good set. A lot of the yards back and then some. 
A first down as he carries up to the 44. That's a pickup of 15. With a junior running back who can run outside and also take it between the tackles. And here I think this is where this team says he is the best, and that's in between the tackles because of his hard nose running ability. And averages 6.3 yards when he runs the football, too. But he's been bothered by a little bit of a hamstring problem, too. So nice to see that he's able to play today. They were concerned about that. Anthony Washington made the tackle for South Dakota State. If you're just joining us, as one of the Jacks is going to have to come off the field, Christian Rose. Number two, helmet came off during play. Did not participate in play. Now, if somebody was to deliberately knock off that helmet, the player gets to stay in the game. But Rose Boom will get a break. He is the Missouri Valley Conference Freshman of the Year. Yeah, you get the feeling that he's in no hurry to put that helmet on, you know, with that hair flowing like that in the wind. You wouldn't be either, Jim. I know no. you. Of course not. I don't look as good, though, <laughs> as he does. Just a freshman from Sioux Center, Iowa. Second and nine. Little end around action. South Dakota State had him in the backfield and eventually will get him. Horace Phillips was able to make a couple of people miss. But eventually, he was brought down. And Kaya yeah. Slade was there. Yeah, but again, how do you hurt a reverse or anything like that? Again, penetration. Panacea, that penetration that time gets there and allows his players to get there. And again, back this Villanova team up. Third and 14. Wildcats right at their average on third down. Throw over the middle. Trying to make the wide receiver get the yardage back. McClanton got back to the original line of scrimmage and maybe a yard. Jordan Brown there to greet him. Fourth down. If Villanova will get with the ball, now becomes a game of field position. I was just going to say that two minutes to go in this third quarter, and it's just slowly the field is kind of flipping. It was South Dakota State that had the advantage early in this first half, and Villanova has been able to, through a couple possessions, been able to flip the field on them, and now they're going to be able to pin South Dakota State back. John Hinchin is fourth punt. Marquise Lewis is back. Good punt with the win, returned by Lewis from the 10. Running to the near side of the field, trying to reverse himself, but nothing available. With 90 seconds to go in the third quarter, T.J. White up to make the stop for Villanova. North Dakota State playing the Fargo game today, and with three first-half touchdowns, as you view live, from Fargo leading 21 nothing time remaining just a few seconds gone into the third quarter Easton stick has thrown a touchdown pass for the Bison who look every bit as good as they typically do in the playoffs and the defeat earlier this year at the hands of South Dakota State will it be South Dakota State or Villanova well, that's the part in the ball game there where North Dakota State has the football. You can talk to people beside you because you can hear when they're on defense. Uh, it's not possible. Fantastic place. 19,000 fans typically jamming into that place and great atmosphere. And what, the, what about the facilities here as you kind of look around too? This place is kind of a sleeping giant too. I mean, it's going to really help with recruiting a $65 million facility. And, Look around here, check out that scoreboard. Actronics, that's local company here too. They get to share some of that wealth on the board. That's nice. A building footprint of 14 acres. By the way, last time for me at the Fargo Dome, I got laryngitis. And by the third quarter, I was uh, <laughs> I was no match for that crowd. <laughs> Great place though. Ed Shockley from his linebacker spot up to make the tackle. It's no surprise that North Dakota State is winning its game. Youngstown State has a 16-point lead on Jacksonville State with five minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Bo Polini in the FCS ranks in position to move on. 
So we take you for the benefit of two games back to our game. Pass over the middle, dropped. And on third and four, South Dakota State must give up the ball again. Now that's one thing that you did not see during the season for this South Dakota State team. They don't drop the football. They don't make little mistakes. That's why they've had all the success offensively they have. When you talk about scoring 11th in the country, passing eighth in the country, pass efficiency sixth, they've just been taken away today by a very good defense. Yes, it has. Brady Hale will punt. He is back at his own five-yard line. Trying to reclaim field position. Fair catch, 35-yard line. Quarter is over. More drama straight ahead after three. 7-7 seven, seven, with the winner likely headed to the Fargo Dome. Day of surprises today. This game is 7-7. Seven, seven. As it goes to the fourth quarter, as Andy Talley tries to extend his retirement tour, which will end when this game or the first game that he loses is done. This is the biggest rival that Villanova has in the Delaware Blue Hens. So as part of the retirement package from Delaware, he got a what he calls an ugly blue hen. <laughs> now, Delaware folks, don't take this personal. That's that's a rivalry for you. But he did appreciate the gesture. Good Zach to run to the outside to start the fourth quarter. I mentioned the day of surprises. How about some of these scores today? Besides our game at 7-7, Chattanooga down 21-0. The Sam Houston State has tied that game at 21. Eastern Washington, the two seed, had to come from behind and tie Central Arkansas late second quarter, 14-14. And Youngstown State is four and a half minutes away from beating Jacksonville State up 40-24. Hey, off time. You know, Andy Talley in that game against Delaware, they carried him off the field at the end of that ball game. And at 73, he said he wasn't like he was comfortable them carrying. He's like, please don't drop me. Please don't <laughs> drop me. <laughs> He's got a good sense of humor. Yes, right? he does. Second down at seven. Back to Goodzak trying to cut up inside for a couple of yards. Leaves him with a third and manageable. Third and four. Jesse Bobbitt up there to make yet another stop. Those defensive linebackers coming into today. The one thing that they mentioned, that Clint Brown, their defense quarter, mentioned that they do a good job keeping blockers off of them. Bunch of big bodies up front that can do that. Guys off the edge that will take up space and allow that freshman linebacker and his teammates to move to the football. Need to get the ball to the 46. Got a man wide open into South Dakota State Territory. That was a dart to 88. Janga Hodge. Nick Farina makes the tackle. And Hodge, well, he separated a, suffered a lacerated kidney earlier in the season and missed half the year. And boy, are they happy to have him back. Yeah, they said in camp he was amazing. He's a true freshman. They said he was probably the most advanced receiver coming into the program. Probably in Coach Talley's history, he said his route running ability, his hands, everything he had, and they lost him four days before the pit game to open up the season. That darts like on play action, shooting one down the field incomplete. Right now, the field position game seems to be won by Villanova, and if the Wildcats can put together a drive, they are really going to position South Dakota State in a tough spot. Play fake again to try to hold up the backers. And again, Solik with the lick on the quarterback that time. And, and Narzik getting up a little slow that time in this cold weather. Villanova's three losses, all the formidable opponents. FBS is Pitt. And JMU and Richmond both ranked in the top ten. And still very much alive in the FCS playoffs. That Narzik's going to have to throw it away. Pursuit by Ryan Arith. Defensive end, Arith coming off the edge again. We've seen Villanova go back to this play time after time. And another big hit to the sideline. And Bednarzik again getting up slowly. Zach Bednarzik for the day, 18 of 29 for 193. 
And a touchdown. That came with a couple of seconds remaining in the first half on a fourth down gamble by Villanova. Jim, I think this thing's going to come down to which one of these quarterbacks maybe make a mistake, turn the football over, and defense makes a big play. Timeout, Villanova. Their second charge timeout for the second half. Timeout on the field. As it did in the first half, Villanova is using its timeouts. Just one remaining now for the game. Third down, Wildcat football. 47-yard line of South Dakota State in a 7-7 game. And a four-receiver set. For Zach Bednarczyk, a sophomore quarterback. Jacks are going to blitz off the edge. They're sending five. Bednarczyk picks it up. Got a man. 30-yard line first down. Zach Kirkston, his first catch of the game. Zy Mosley brought him down, but not before a huge pickup and a first down to the 30. Another true freshman as a wide receiver, Kirkston. The coaches said before this season, actually, two wide receivers that they brought in here in freshman couldn't have come in at better time. Not of a lot of experience returning to the outside. And boy, how about that throw by Bed Narzik? You said it. That rush was coming. The blitz was coming. He waited and delivered a strike to the outside. By the, court, oh, by the way, in case you're curious, Gerard Smith, the field goal kicker for Villanova. His longest of the year is 43. And they're just about in position for that. All things considered, though, the weather and the wind could be a factor. Yeah, but I'd say that the, it's a helping win for him right now because it's blowing right to left, and it has all game. So for Villanova, they've got the wind in this fourth quarter. Good point. James Madison has just polished off New Hampshire to move on. 55-22. Second and eight. That Nardzik in trouble and brought down. I'm going to spot him back at the line of scrimmage. Previous play, no gain on the play. Jared Blum, Ryan Aaron. Boy, credit the Jack Rabbit secondary that time. Plenty of time to throw the football, and you can see Ben Narzik, that's at the end of the play, but he had time to throw the football, and that offensive line doing a good job, but South Dakota State's secondary really clamping down on Villanova's receivers. Could be four down territory for the Wildcats who have been known to take a risk in this game. And that brings us to fourth down. We have had on the last six offensive series, six punts. You can see McClinton there. He thought the defender had his arm wrapped around him, but that ball was really not catchable there. I doubt he's going to get could get a flag on something like that. Gerard Smith will try to give Villanova the lead. And this attempt will be his longest of the season. And a penalty flag before that happens could be a legal substitution. Too many men on the field. Illegal substitution. Kicking team. 12 minute formation. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. So does Villanova try a field goal now of 51 or kick it away? I'm trying to get an indication on the field looking over. I don't know what the answer is to it. It looks like now they're going to have to punt it away. And again, special teams penalties have really hurt Villanova today. They've used some timeouts when they didn't want to have them. And now special teams have not forced them away. And those three points could you know, be the difference in the game. Yeah, well said. In fact, Villanova is down to one timeout, John, for the game. Five penalties now for Villanova, 35 yards, and one for South Dakota State. Trying to go for a pooch pump, but way too long for that. Jack Rabbits with the football back in the 20 with 10.46 left in the fourth quarter. Good spot to be, folks. Well-dressed, having a good time 
Highly competitive playoff game at 7-7. The lights have been on for quite some time because of the swirling snow. If you're just joining us for the first time, pull up a chair. We could have a great finish to this with 10.46 left in the fourth. Jim Barber, John Gregory, football at the 20-yard line of South Dakota State. In the first quarter, the Jackrabbits had 113 total yards and a touchdown. Since then, no points, 23 total yards. That's how suffocating this Villanova defense has been. It certainly has been. And for Taron Christian, he's really struggled. Two of eight for 15 yards here in the second half. They have not been able to get anything going. Keep in mind, this team averaged 314 yards per game coming in and passing eighth in the FCS. Villanova had some headset difficulties to start the game. Those seem to have been rectified. It was a rough start because they lost a defensive end. They trailed 7-0 and had no communication. Since then, they've been able to get the return of Tano Passigno. They tied the football game at the end of the first half, and all communication appears to be working. You know, Jim, it's a lot like we were talking about at the very beginning. South Dakota State ranked highly on the, in the FCS in all those offensive categories. When you look at Villanova's defense, they were number nine in the country against pass defense for their pass defense, giving up 170 yards a game. So something had to give, and right now it's given on the side of South Dakota State as Villanova's been able to hold them down. Yes, even a little better, John, against the rush, top ten in the country, and Jack Rabbits have been unable to run the football to get a big time third down completion there up to the 34-yard line when they needed it the most. Yeah, and who do they go to when they need it the most? Da Dallas Goddard. I think I would throw him the football every time as he's a guy with great hands and the ability to get open. I would start to look for him time after time. First and 10, 34-yard line, nearly picked off, and in fact, probably should have been. Austin Calitro was right there. He's a tri-cap of this team and a CAA first-teamer. Boy, he was reading the eyes that time of Taron Christian as he was just staring down Dallas Goddard down the center of the field. And Calitro, that would have been his first interception on the year. This defense coached by Billy Crocker, who told us earlier in the week, if the coach is the good cop and the offensive coordinator is the great cop, I'm the bad cop. Yeah. Which you would imagine most defensive coordinators to be. A little inside shovel pass, a little hurdle there for a modest gain. And it'll bring us to third down, but South Dakota State can find no room to move. Well, try to get it to one of your best players. This time they do it with a little shovel pass. As you wonder if Goddard has got any athletic ability as a tight end. And look no further than that play there is his ability to jump over the top. Jacks were able to complete a pass on third down moments ago. Can they do it again? As we reach nine minutes for the game. Five-man pressure, throw, ball, caught. Another big third down conversion. Guess who caught it? Goddard saying, feed me the football a little bit here, and he's starting to talk a little bit. We saw earlier in this game, he doesn't lack for confidence at all, and this is a nice throw to the outside. He was well covered that time by Rashawn Stewart, but great soft hands by the big tight end as he's able to haul that one in. Update from the Fargo Dome. Both teams have scored over the last couple of minutes. It's now 28-7 North Dakota State over San Diego. Fresh set of downs again, completing a pass on third down. That one is incomplete. Intended for Brady Mangarelli. This defense, players like Jason Senius, Rashawn Stewart, Malik Reeves, Trey Johnson. Ryan Osei, you saw in your picture, 46. He's playing some terrific football today at a time where it's needed the most. At the 46-yard line. And the spot will be into Villanova territory at the 48 to pick up a six. Galitro with a tackle at his linebacker position for Villanova. The one thing for South Dakota State's offense today is when they do catch a pass, 
really the Villanova defense has been right there to be able to bring them down. There hasn't been any really yards after the catch so far today. Yeah, that's, that's well noted. Got it with six catches now in this game. Let's see if they can make it three successful conversions in a row on third down. Going to set up a screen. They're going to get it to the 42 yard line. They're doing a nice job, John, right now, mixing up their plays. Malik Reeves tried to get Mangarelli before he did anything special, but couldn't do it. Yeah, they had one offensive lineman that was releasing downfield that time, and a nice, you know, call it a screen. That's a play call there. Again, anticipating maybe a blitz out of Villanova. They get the right call in the right situation, and more importantly, they move the chains. It is halfway through the fourth quarter. Will score here win the game. South Dakota State suddenly hot on third down. This is the 10th play of the drive. And it seems like every first down play starts with an incompleted pass at the feet of a receiver. Maybe they're doing their best work when they're pressured to do so. Yeah, they're trying to hit the backs out of the backfield, really, and make this Villanova team run sideline to sideline. They're so strong up front in the ability to get to the quarterback that they're getting rid of it quickly to their backs, trying to make somebody break something. All three timeouts remain for the Jacks, one for Villanova. And a toss sweep. Not much available there on the run by Jacob Brown. Brian White and Ed Shockley up to make the tackle. Again, South Dakota State without Mikey Daniel due to a shoulder injury and Isaac Wallace who did not pass concussion protocol. Jacob Brown, not a guy that we would normally say that you'd see or anticipating him trying to get some speed on the field and have him break something. That's just his second catch on the year if you want to actually call that a completion. Can the catch make it four in a row on third down? Need to pick up nine. Christian in trouble and drag down. Inside the 45-yard line, Jafanta Johnson. Big number 50. Christian feels the pressure on the inside. He starts to move to the outside and right into the hands of Johnson. Nowhere to go with the football. And Johnson, redshirt freshman, he's just rushing the quarterback to the outside, and he allowed him to come right to him. He was a high school captain for his football team in Syracuse, New York. Each team now with four punts in the second half. The catch and the tackle. Kyle Tuttle with the hit. Time out on the field. Villanova pinned back inside its own 15. Who's going to win it? 5.43 left and still tied. We mentioned earlier Villanova's men's team took care of St. Joe will become the number one team in college basketball on Monday because UCLA upset Kentucky. Let's give a little love to South Dakota State which beat UNKC today at home 77 68 for its third consecutive win. This one still to be decided. Alan Solik has had a very active game today. As Aaron Forbes was a ball carrier there. Sophomore from Newburgh, New York. And working through some ankle difficulties. After the gain of five, it is second and five. Quarterback Zach Bednarzik. Going to get everybody set. Play clock at three. Going to run some option. Going to get the first down. Carries the football to the 25. Pick up a six. Clock continues to move after it stopped momentarily. And so do the chains. And that was a great decision by Bednarzik, the quarterback. He had a pitch guy to the outside. And the defender 
doing the same thing, stringing it to the outside, and he decided to hold the football that time, and because of that, he was able to get the first down. Good decision on his part not to pitch that ball. And, John, we should mention again, just one timeout remaining for the Wildcats, three for the Jackrabbits. If you're Villanova, when do you try to strike down the middle of the field and maybe get a long gainer? Knowing full well, you got to cover some territory to get a chance to win it. Yeah, I think you can't wait. Well, you can't wait too long. I mean, I think this team is so good with their play action when they're having success running the ball. They just haven't been able to run it today. South Dakota State's defense has taken that away. So the play action hasn't done a whole lot today, but I see them having to take a chance pretty soon. Second and nine. Clock dips under four for the game. Four down linemen for South Dakota State. Tough pass there. Incomplete intended for Brandon Chadbourne. Clock stops at 3.48 to go. Chadbourne on the outside. It's a kind of a natural pick to the inside, but that just that football is thrown behind him. Really no chance for him to catch that football. Crowd alive and well on third down and nine. Rabbit show blitz, drop seven. Bednarzik in trouble. And nearly picked off. That's the second time we've seen Bednarzik running to his left, the left-handed quarterback, and throw the ball back toward the center of the field. And you talk about a dangerous play down here in your own territory. Look at him. He threw that back toward the hash mark, and he knew right when he let that football go. That may have been a bad decision, and that was that turnover I was talking about late in the ball game, Jim. Which quarterback here may make a mistake? Chris Boster nearly had the pick, which would have been his second, and a huge one for South Dakota State. Either team the turnover so far. A return from the 30. A little bit of room to run. And now it closes up. A return of eight. And so the Jackrabbits hoping to keep the football to the end of the game to try to win it. Three and a half to go, and all three timeouts are left. Eric Eidness has just broken the huddle as his team all set on offense to go to work from the 40-yard line. Good field position, all three timeouts left. A score could win it and move them on to the next round. Christian tries to find his way forward. There is nothing available. 33 Ed Shockley. You know, it was said by the defense that the linebackers have a chance to make a lot of plays, and they're making a ton of plays in this game. Sandy, or South Dakota State's been unable to run the ball at all in this game, John. No, when we talk with the defensive coordinator, Billy Crocker, he was talking about how they need to just slow this team down, make them drive the entire field. Well, they've taken away the big play, and that's what they've done is make them drive the length of it, and they haven't been able to do it. Forcing the Christian, the throw ball caught. It's a big gainer. Goddard to the rescue. Dallas Goddard has been huge down the stretch. That's good for 35. Malik Reeves finally caught him. And I can't even promise you that this ball was intended for Goddard. Watch him come out. He recognizes the ball. It looked like he was trying to throw it to the wide receiver coming across the field. Goddard does his quarterback a favor and comes back to the football and makes a huge play for this offense. Getting themselves closer to field position for a field goal attempt. In fact, Jace Vinatieri has one beyond the 40-yard line, and right now it would be an attempt beyond 40. Play clock down to five. Time out. South Dakota State. Their first of the second half. 30 seconds. Time out. Now the Rabbits have to burn one here, but they'll get everybody settled with 2.17 to go. And now they're in good position to win this football game. Well, they needed the one big play. We hadn't seen any big plays here in the second half for this South Dakota State offense. And Goddard finds a way to get to the football and make that big play. 
And now their team's in a position. Remember, they are kicking into the wind. Not a very strong wind, but there is a wind in that direction. Saw John Stiglmeyer, longtime coach of South Dakota State. His offense set to go to work at the 26. Mangarelli makes a man miss. Goes forward to the 23 in a carry of three. Field goal kicker for South Dakota State is Chase Vinatieri, the nephew of Adam Vinatieri, who's likely to kick into his 90s with the Colts the way he's going, John. Got a possibility to, to win this thing. Just a freshman, a big situation for him, but experienced family. I don't know if that does anything for you or not. Yeah, but. I think that's uh, <laughs> points for Adam kicking back in the 90s here at SDSU. Second and seven. Looking for a touchdown. Has a man over the middle. Incomplete. Intended for Dallas Goddard just beyond his reach. Boy, and Taron Christian, you can see him. He's still jumping up and down. When he let this football go, he knew it was just out of the reach of his big tight end. And look at his reaction. He knew when he let that ball go, he had an opportunity that he let slip by. If this drive stalls here, it'd be a field goal attempt of 40. It's still down to be played before a decision to be made. On third and seven. Out of the backfield incomplete. And so now Chase Vinatieri should be coming on to attempt a 40 yarder for the lead. Vinatieri 40 yards and beyond is just one of seven. Nine of 15 for the season. His longest is 42. Trent Hale the snap, Christian the hold. Kick on the way. Good! Well, Uncle Adam is preparing for the Jets this weekend in New York. He'd be mighty proud right here. South Dakota State by three. John, to take a phrase from a television commercial, with the name Vinatieri, it's got to be good. <laughs> Boy, that well, I think that the way that hit the upright at the very top of it, that may have been good from 60 yards. Villanova to get the ball, 81 seconds to go, a timeout left, still time. Field goal to tie and a touchdown maybe to win it. And this drive will start near the 30-yard line. Let's go back to... Benetieri's all-important kick moments ago. This thing hits off the top right. The very top and sneaks through. We were talking about kicking into the wind, that huge scoreboard we were talking about. That's on that end of the stadium. And it looks like it really knocks the wind down because the flags on top are not moving in that direction. But on the goalpost that you can see right there behind it, you can see a pretty stiff win. As you might imagine, fans representing South Dakota State are getting mighty loud right now. Playoff advancement on the line from the 30. And that's a loss of 10. Cole Langer. Cole Langer, 315 pounds. It's been him and Solik all day long in the face of Bednarzik. Nowhere to go with the football. And this, these fans here that we have on a cold day, they are into it as big as they've been all day. Langer's the grandson of NFL Hall of Famer Jim Langer. Set up north, a couple hundred miles to the Fargo Dome. 
where North Dakota State has been handling San Diego all afternoon long. And in fact, score of that game is 28 7, just starting the fourth quarter. With that hold served, North Dakota State will host next week. And South Dakota State is 58 seconds away from a monster rematch. What do you think? They're thinking up there, we don't want this South Dakota State team to come back again. They've already <laughs> beat us once. You think they're rooting for Villanova, you mean? I bet you see some fans saying, no, we want to have them back. But in the back of their mind, they're thinking, oh, maybe not. No timeouts left for Villanova. Second and 18. Now the play clock begins. Ed Nartik against a four man rush to the sidelines. Caught by Ryan Bell. Clock stops. Ball to 32. That's a pickup of 10. Have to get eight more yards to sustain the drive. And they have to do it without timeouts, too. And they've. You know, they blew those timeouts early here in the second half, just like they did at the end of the first half. They're going to struggle down here to score with only 54 seconds remaining. Going to have to use the sidelines or the middle of the field getting first downs. Then Narzik steps up, throws, bounced it at the 40. They're down to one play. Once again, Langer. And then it was Solik so much early in this game, and now Langer has taken over from the other defensive tackle spot. We'll let you enjoy fourth down here with the crowd. Jackson moving on. You know, John, it's a tough way for Andy Talley to end a great career, but his team has put up a terrific fight. Now he knew what he had coming into this ball game, and that's why he went for the touchdown at the end of the first half. He knew how difficult it was going to be to score today against this South Dakota State defense, and it it showed. So his decision to not go for three and go for seven at the end of the first half was big, but their offense was just shut out here in the second half by South Dakota State. And a likely rematch coming up between South Dakota State and North Dakota State. And that will do it. And Jim, you got to give him credit. This was a well-played football game. A couple mistakes on some special teams outside of that well-played game. A great defensive game. And congratulations to both of these teams on a great effort today. John Stiglmeyer, head coach of South Dakota State, and this man, Andy Telly, who has his career after 32 seasons at Villanova and 39 overall. You can imagine what the exchange is like there, John. A lot of respect right there. 57 years of head coaching experience, almost 400 wins between those two, and you can't help, help but have respect. And when we talk with those coaches during the week, both of them said about the commitment to not only the team and the players and their coaching staff, but to the institution to allow them to stay there. And that's why these teams are having all the success they have because of those two gentlemen that met at, half, met at that midfield. Don't forget the NCAA FCS quarterfinals coming up this next weekend on Friday and Saturday. Let's take time now to update the bracket as the Jackets move on to the quarters. Likely to face North Dakota State, which leads 31-7 with 10 minutes and change left in the game at home against San Diego. James Madison, lower end of the bracket, polishes off New Hampshire. Sam Houston, Chattanooga still too close to call 35-33.
Sam Houston at 9.42 of the fourth quarter. What a very competitive day of FCS playoffs. Well, I thought we were going to have a good one today. I thought our matchup was, when you look around the country today, this was as good as anyone, and we got everything we expected. So the Jacks get to enjoy the school song with the band that hovered in the snow today in the wind and the cold. And they'll have another week of college football to play, and for a lot of these guys, particularly seniors, that's, that's very special. No, you never want it to end, especially your senior year. And having a chance to go up there and play against a big rival, it will be exciting for them. So for John Gregory, Jim Barber, so long from Brookings. We had a good one today. South Dakota State beats Villanova to move on to the playoffs and the next round by a score of 10-7 to watch this entire game on replay as well as other games on our ESPN networks. Log on to watch ESPN.com or download the Watch ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.